Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Iridium and comparing the stock caps to the impulse responses from David Hislop, taking a look at how they sound different. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That would mean a ton to me. It means you can stay up to date with each video. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so this is Strymon's impulse response manager that I've got pulled up. Um, we'll go through a couple of the ones that I use. Again, we're on the Chime, back on the Chime. Um, and we can kind of see the ones that I usually use down here. So this is kind of my standard one. I'll throw it on DH Brett, DH just for David Hislop, just to kind of help me keep track of which one I'm using. I know a lot of people have been using his lately. And this is um, Brit Alt, kind of um, just a different flavor, I think. This one is uh, the Greenback, the same speakers, um, just with a blended Royer uh, 121 in there too. And this is gonna be kind of my um, free bank over here where we're going to AB some um, of the stock ones versus the, the David Hislop ones. So this is kind of where we're starting. We'll begin with um, just that standard uh, British sound that I've got. It's a really cool sound, lots of top end, um, warm, it's got size, it's got width, all that fun stuff. So now let's go over to um, the original blue. <laughs> So that one doesn't sound too bad. It's not quite as 3D as these over here. Um, and again, that might come down to the actual cab that it is, the mics on it. And you can see, I believe this is actually an own hammer one if that's what that um, OH stands for. So let's pull this one in as well. So again, here is um, the one that I use. <laughs> Here's a 112 um, closed cab with a blue in it. So that one definitely doesn't kind of have the bloom on it um, that an open back cabinet would, you know, kind of letting the speaker breathe a bit. Definitely sounds like a closed back, so credit to them. It just sounds a little thin. And really to my ear, I've gravitated towards the green back with AC30s because it does round off some of the top um, and tightens up the bottom too. So with a blue, you're gonna get lots of top, a good amount of um, low end, and it's gonna kind of do this to the mid range, a green kind of, We'll roll off some top, keep the bottom there, um, keep the lows there, but it'll kind of um, flatten that mid-range. Um, Voxes, they are mid-rangey, but when they're clean, they're actually a little bit scooped. That mid-range really kind of wakes up when you wind the amp up, but I love the green because um, it can kind of fill in, uh, fill in that gap um, for the cleans. And then we'll go, I'm not sure what this is, it's like a 412 something or other. Um, again, here's what we were starting with. And here's the 412. So again, at least clean, they don't sound bad. Um, these just sound so much more polished and kind of three-dimensional um, to me. And they kind of get that flat EQ that I was really looking for. Let's AB just these two real quick and then we'll throw on a little bit of drive and see how um, certain um, impulse responses kind of handle some drive. So here is uh, kind of my stock one or the standard one. <laughs> And 
and this is essentially going to be the exact same, um, just with some of the, the Royer, the 121, um, mixed in. So again, just kind of an alternate sound there, and I'll swap in um, different things depending on what a certain project needs or anything like that. Let's throw on a little bit of drive. Let's just go Benson, and we'll just play around in the key of B, a little bit darker of a reverb, and see what that does. <laughs> that first stock preset, see what that sounds like. Go to that second one. That one in particular, I really, really don't like with drive. The first one you can get by with, it just, it feels like it's right up in front of you, you know, instead of getting a little bit of spray, uh, space and kind of letting the thing breathe. So what we can do after that one is also take a look at the 412, see if that's any better. So to my ear, the three of those just there's just a harshness there. Um, it sounds like the the amp is like right in front of your face, so it's not the most pleasing thing in the world to listen to, especially for long amounts of time. If you're listening into a whole song, or um, if you're gonna record like playthroughs like I do, and gonna have a four or five six minute video, you don't want to have a tone that people want to turn off. And so I really like how smooth these are. Another trick that I do that really kind of was a game changer. Number two. Um, the first game changer was definitely looking at these um, IRs and kind of making that swap over to um, the Hislop IRs. Second thing I do is you can come in here and you can, so all of those sound really, really good. Probably get like 95, 96% of the way from me. The one thing about the, the Iridium that I've had trouble kind of dialing in is making it feel as warm as a tube amp. And so I've never really played around with the um, independent, you know, EQ and level things in here. I don't really touch the level. I don't really touch treble. But if we come in here and we'll match both sides just so they're the same. And if we get about a two decibel boost on the um, on the low end, we'll see what that does. <laughs> Take that out real quick, just for a quick A, B. And again, tonally, it's not gonna do a ton, but um, I really, really love having that extra low end there. Um, even if it winds up getting carved out with EQ later, I, I love having that there because that kind of gives me that low mid um, thump that you want, and I love how it kind of warms up the low end without really um, decreasing the highs at all. So let me play that one little thing. Let's let's put some drive back on, and we'll see um, if that um, slight fill out on the low end comes through in a mix. <laughs> Again, 
Again, it's not going to be like the most um, obvious thing in the world, but for me, that definitely helps the feel, even if it's like that extra one or two, maybe 3% to get it um, right up next to that amp feel. So I'm going to keep that. Let's move over to the round amp now and see what those sound like. All right, so we've got the round amp pulled up now. Um, again, I, I follow kind of the same template here. I just have my main DHUSA right here. This is that same G10 speaker that was down here. Um, since it does come from a Fender amp. And this is from a twin, I believe. And then this over here is just, I have it set to the opposite of this um, right now, just for a different feel, but I might drop some other things in here, um, again, depending on situation. So we'll use this, this C-Bank over here, again, kind of as the um, the test against the, the stock one. So let's see what we're working with, um, with the David Hislop kind of standard sound. <laughs> So let's go to, I guess this is just a standard 112 um, Deluxe Reverb. This is gonna be a Blues Junior Cab. Last but not, not least, let's go to um, the Vibrolux cab. <laughs> it's worth um, I think the fender cabs that they made and um, the settings that they made are much better than the Vox options that they gave my favorite of the fenders is definitely that Vibrolux I think it's full I think it's punchy I think it's warm um, which is everything you need with a fender these two I just don't love them they feel a little stiff and a little cardboardy or like papery um, just not a ton of depth so if you're gonna stick to the stock one uh, the stock ones I would definitely go with that option um, three. So let's A, B, let's do a little drive. Again, we'll throw on the Benson and kind of do that similar um, chord progression. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's grab that 112 from the Deluxe. Already, you can just you can hear that harshness that's there, um, and that's something that I just don't like. I'm, that's the only thing I'm changing. The only thing I'm changing is the cab, and it's that much of a tonal difference. Um, here's the, the Blues Junior Cab. That one's better, but again, it just does the Blues Junior, you know, feels like it's in a box thing. And then let's see, I think this is still the best of the stock cabs for the uh, the fender, so let's see all that stacks up. If anything, oh wow, that's already brought back. Um, if anything, I was gonna say that could definitely bring um, some of the bass back. Let's see if we can get the right side. Sounds a little bass heavy, a little uh, more evened out. <laughs> So 
So again, I think that definitely works if you, um, I mean, you could go for a slightly different EQ on each side, but to get them even, I think that sounds the best. So that's kind of a, a, a run through of um, some of the IRs that I use versus the stock ones. I haven't really touched a lot of the, the punch stuff. I've got some loaded here just in case I do need a Marshall sound. Um, I just don't use that sound often. I know a bunch of guys who have gotten really good results from the punch. So definitely worth checking out too. I just don't use that um, that often, but that's a rundown kind of of the chime and the round um, and how they sound. So we'll wrap it up there um, and we'll see you guys next time.